Happy Thursday, everyone. How are we doing? <laughs> I'm Tom Shalhoub, in, in for Greg Gutfeld, who said he had to attend something deep in the woods off Interstate 95. <laughs> I'm not sure what it was, but it sounded urgent. Anyway, don't pretend you're not glad to see me. <laughs> it's almost 2023, which means two things. One, I'll be old enough to rent a car. <laughs> and two, Joe Biden will be halfway through his presidency. <laughs> so before the ball drops like Joe falling off a bicycle, <laughs> let's talk about how he's finishing 2022. On Wednesday, President Biden welcomed Ukrainian leader Zelensky to the White House, assuring him U.S. support in the fight against Russia. Zelensky gave Biden a Ukrainian cross for military merit, which Biden called undeserved but much appreciated, which I think is the same thing Joe said after he got elected. <laughs> <laughs> but that might have been the most normal moment the administration's had in the past week. Take, for instance, the second quarter jobs report. They claim the U.S. added more than one million jobs between March and June. <laughs> And that's not including the 140 replacements for Kamala's staffers. <laughs> but the Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia report released last week said job growth was essentially flat, that only 10,500 jobs were added during that time. And since it's the Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia, the report concluded with the sound of gunfire. <laughs> so again, it's Biden trying to take credit for economic achievements that simply aren't there. But hey, maybe we're just used to a befuddled president at this point. On Friday, during a town hall on veterans' benefits, he casually said some weird things about being Irish while botching his wife's family history. I may be Irish, but I'm not stupid. I married Dominic Giacoppa's daughter, so, you know, I got a little Italian in me now, you know. <laughs> That doesn't even make sense, <laughs> according to a basic understanding of bi biology. <laughs> and he got his wife's genealogy wrong. Dominic Chiacopa was Jill Biden's grandfather, not her father. No biggie, I guess. You say tomato, I say you're senile. <laughs> <laughs> and as for the Irish, they are very smart, all right, when they're not drinking which is at least one day a week. <laughs> but that wasn't even Joe's most interesting moment from that event. Moments later, Joe told this tale of his uncle Frank Biden winning the Purple Heart for his actions in World War II. You know, I, uh, my dad, when I got elected vice president, he said, Joey, Uncle Frank fought in the Battle of the Bulge. He was not feeling very well now, not because of the Battle of the Bulge, but he said, and he won the Purple Heart, and he never received it. He never, he never got it. Do you think you could help him get it? We'll surprise him. So he got him the Purple Heart. <laughs> it's a touching story, but maybe not accurate. True, his uncle Frank Biden served in the Army during World War II, but he died in 1999. And Biden's father, Joe Sr., died in 2002 when Joe was still in the Senate. He didn't become VP until 2009. So, at the very least, his timeline's a little off. But multiple outlets and researchers from the New York Post couldn't locate any reference to Frank Biden receiving the Purple Heart while he was alive or posthumously, which, as you know, means at the post office. <laughs> the Army notes that there's not a consistent record of Purple Heart recipients. Yeah, you know, who'd want to keep a list of such a meaningless thing like that, right? <laughs> But neither Frank's tombstone nor his obituary identify him as a Purple Heart honoree. So the details of Joe's story, like his second quarter job numbers, don't add up. And the idea of Frank receiving a Purple Heart isn't, an is isn't the issue, really. It's another case of Biden embellishing a story that's suspect. At this point, I no longer believe, believe that Joe earned his own Purple Heart from the War of 1812. <laughs> It's a pattern that's become more common than Julie Bandera saying, why, yes, I will have that sixth glass of Pinot. <laughs> Cabernet. <laughs> I got the wine wrong. <laughs>
So what's in store for Joe in 2023? Well, maybe more friction between him and his VP. According to a new Politico report uh, and a book out in January, it claims that Biden called Kamala Harris a work in progress last year, <laughs> which is kind of like calling a plane crash an unexpected layover. <laughs> Apparently, Joe vented to a friend that he was frustrated that Kamala was always complaining about the jobs that were assigned to her. That included deterring illegal immigration and pushing Congress to pass an election reform and voting rights law. According to the book, which I don't intend to read, <laughs> Biden was annoyed. He hadn't asked Harris to do anything he hadn't done as vice president, and she'd begged him for the voting rights assignment. And like everything else Kamala gets put in charge of, that voting initiative flopped. So, anything to add, Joe? No, 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 look, look. <laughs> yeah, I I like Kamala. She's all right. I like her almost as much as that Zaletsky guy. Oh, I like Zaletsky with the... Uh, I like him in those little tight T-shirts. He looks good. He looks like a little G.I. Joe. Yeah, we ought to sell those. A little, uh, little G.I. Joe kind of Zaletsky's with the kung fu grip. Holding on to a nice fat wad of American cash. When she's out sick, she always brings a note from her mixologist, Fox News anchor and author of the children's book, Fiona's Fantastical Fort. Bottoms up. Julie Banderas. <laughs> His writing appears in America's top magazines, newspapers, and ransom notes. Fox News contributor and Washington Times opinion editor, Charlie Hurt. <laughs> She's got stronger columns than the Parthenon. Editor-in-chief of The Federalist, Molly Hemingway. And he's the man of a thousand faces. All of them terrified. Writer and comedian, Joe Mackey. So, Charlie, what are your thoughts on Zelensky's visit? Wow. Um... You know, uh, you know, I have, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just an American citizen. I have, uh, you know, one member of Congress, uh, two senators. This is a guy that's Several got... Several bartenders. Yeah, yeah. This is a guy that has, uh, what, 400 uh, congressmen and 97 senators. Um, it's extraordinary. We've never seen anything like it. Um, <laughs> the guy just comes over. It's, you know, we've become his ATM machine, as everybody's... Pointed out, uh, he comes, you know, dressed like uh, perfect description, dressed like a, a, a GI Joe figurine. It's the strangest thing on it. And then he walks away with fifty billion dollars. He did great, and yeah. obviously they loved him. The Congress loved him. Do you think it was more? Do you think he wanted to come over here, or do you think the Biden administration wanted him over here for you know for political purposes? I think it's a little bit of both. Yeah. Uh, it's you know he comes over here and says, hey, thanks for thanks for what you've done for us, but we need more money. And oh, by the way, it's not charity. Um, but without a doubt, uh, and and you know this election sort of. Uh, didn't go exactly as a lot of people thought it, it would. But there's an enormous amount of pent-up frustration towards this administration and uh, with the economy. And uh, so, without a doubt, I mean, you know, some, uh, you know, he, he definitely helps the Biden administration. Yeah. Uh, Molly, do you get tired of Biden taking credit for all the jobs he's created, which were really just people getting fired during COVID? It's amazing. You know, we had two quarters of negative growth this year. Everyone knows that means that you're in a recession. They redefine it so that we can say we're not in a recession. And then they come out with these job numbers right before the election, saying that there were these miraculous, like, a million jobs. Oh, it was actually 10,000. It's really just amazing what he can get away with. Yeah. I mean, the, the fact that they always have to kind of look on the sunny side, you can't blame them for that. But when they're really fudging numbers, that's what gets me, Julie. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, would you say this, would you classify this as a bad week for the Biden? Oh, it's a bad week, all right. But you know what? You know, this this just further backs up my longstanding analogy um, that has stood the test of time for centuries. Size matters. And <laughs> when you Is it that old? Yes. And, and it, you haven't been told this I by know. past girlfriend? I've never heard such a thing, Julie. Oh, okay. So when you embellish the truth or size of something or it, 
it's get, you're going to get caught. You know what I mean? And it's just another sad and desperate measure by the Biden administration because they were caught. I mean, a million, it was, uh, what was it? 1,047,000 jobs when the number was really 10,500. I mean, you can't put lipstick on a pig and when you, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's a pig. Do you really think there's friction with uh, Biden and Kamala? The way oh, that absolutely. this book was reporting? I mean, he wants to tuck her away and, and put her to, out to pasture, but it's too late. He, 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 he added her to his ticket. I mean, why do you think she doesn't go anywhere? She was supposed to take care of the border. She's never gone there. The president has never been there in his whole damn life. Um, and she hasn't done anything. So, uh, yeah, she's a work in progress, all right, but there is no progress. She's just a piece of work. You know what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Joe, do you agree that Kamala is a work in progress. That's the phrase that Joe's used. I think when he said that, he probably means that he hasn't sniffed her hair yet. <laughs> <laughs> but to me, the, the insane part of this is that Joe Biden lies so much that his house got struck by lightning and started a fire, and then he lied about the fire. <laughs> I, I mean, you're the president. We're impressed. You don't have to embellish yes. the kitchen fire. I know. He's got... He's so old. He has plenty of stories. Why is he always... He, first of all, he uses the same ones. He's talking about corn pop, and he's making up other stories about the Purple Heart. But, I mean, he's, lit, he's led a long life. You think you could find some real stories to tell? Yeah, the, the Amtrak story, it's not really that action-packed. I'd like to hear more about the time that you were president. <laughs> <laughs> Molly, you had a great column this week uh, about the uh, uh, about McConnell in, in the Senate, and uh, you know I think something about this administration. If you compare them on a scale, people aren't that happy with Congress or either, are they? It's amazing. You've got the vast majority of the country upset about the direction that the country is going in. You had an election where you had the Republicans take over the House, and Mitch McConnell led a bunch of Republicans to help the Biden administration with a $1.7 trillion omnibus, like was cheerleading for it and was very happy with the results. That's right. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.